Hello, this is New Vision TV. I'm Lynn Komjisha. All the seven men who have been presidents of Uganda faced very difficult circumstances in exile until they either died or pleaded with Kampala for mercy to be allowed to return home. New Vision TV looks at the hazardous life after presidency of a Ugandan. As the direct successor to Uganda's 600 years old throne, Edward Mutesa II never ever searched that he would die alone in a poor flat after spending four years in exile. But once the Kavaka accepted to become president of Uganda in 1963, his fate was sealed. And three years later, he was on the run for his life after his palace was attacked by Idi Amin on Milton Obote's instructions. After walking in the wilderness for days, he found his way to Burundi and finally England, a penless refugee. Though Mutesa had been a wealthy man in Uganda who even gave away his presidential salary for the development of Karamoja, the regime in Kampala froze his accounts to deny him livelihood. When assigned powers of attorney to his sister Ndagere so she could sell some land and send him the money, Obote arrested her and detained her without trial until Mutesa died. Unable to find employment, Mutesa suffered the ultimate humiliation by accepting to live on a dole, which is some money given to the poorest destitutes of England to keep them from starving. He stayed without family for those last four years and died at a younger 45. Milton Obote, who was overthrown in 1971, wound up in Tanzania in exile. Luckily for him, President Nyerere backed the war that overthrew Amin in 1971, and Obote regained presidency. But when he was overthrown for the second and last time in 1985, he fled penniless in Zambia and lived quietly for a while. His wife, Miria, stayed away from him in Kenya. But when his old friend, Kenneth Kaunda, lost power in an election, Obote's conditions took a dramatic turn for the worse. His residence was taken over by some minister, and Obote was moved to poor section of town. Some of the compound was converted to a cassava garden. Journalists who visited Obote in exile politely described his condition as modest, but in private said it was miserable. His personal doctor, Opiot, and son Jimmy Akena remained faithful with him until he died, totally wasted, in 1995. Field Marshal Idi Amin lived large as president, with everything from parliament, constitution, and executive powers vested into him. When he was overthrown in 1879, he fled to the Middle East, first in Libya, and was finally taken in by Saudi Arabia, but under strict instructions to shut up. He also had no money, but because his hosts were rich, he was provided with the necessities of life. His favorite and youngest wife, Sarah, deserted him and secured divorce from him. The other wife, Medina, lived in Zaire, where President Mobutu gave some little assistance, but she finally returned to Uganda. Professor Yusuf Lule was president for 68 days after the fall of Idi Amin. When he was overthrown, he was detained in Tanzania for some time until he was released under pressure and returned to the UK where he was a full-time resident. The academic and administrator was restless and after setting up a rebel movement, joined hands with Yoram Museveni and they formed the National Resistance Movement with Lule as its first chairman. Lule died before the NRM could capture power. He was reburied at Kolo as a national hero. Godfrey Binaisa replaced Yusuf Lule, and when he was overthrown in 1980, Binaisa was held under house arrest for about a year in Entebbe. When he was released, Binaisa escaped to exile, where he spent several years, mainly in America, under very difficult conditions. With his advanced age, he couldn't continue hustling as in Kubacheyo, the Ugandan slug for migrant workers. So Binaisa wrote an emotional letter to President Yoram Seveni, pleading to be allowed to return. He said all he wanted was to spend his sunset years at home. He was allowed back and lived a quiet life with a Korean wife acquired under the Reverend Moni arrangement until he died in 2010. Paolo Mwanga, the man who overthrew Binaisa, took a lower job of vice president after he organized the elections and his party chairman Milton Obote took the presidency in December 1980. Mwanga also got the powerful defense portfolio. 
When Okello Lutwa overthrew Boti in 1985, Mwanga briefly became prime minister. When the NRM captured power in 1986, Mwanga was imprisoned for two years. When he became terribly sick, he was released to be taken to hospital and died soon after in Nairobi. General Tito Okello overthrew Obote II in July 1985. Okello ruled for exactly six months but managed to furnish state house and even imported a bed for himself. When he lost power to the NRA, he fled to Tanzania where he lived a difficult life. He reached out to President Moi of Kenya. Moi in turn wrote an emotional letter to Museveni pleading with the Ugandan leader to take pity on Okello. In the letter to Museveni, Moi described Okello as a nice, harmless old man. Museveni agreed and Okello returned to Uganda and put in a nice house in Bogolobi. So this is how the seven men who ruled Uganda after independence encountered very difficult times when their regimes came to an end. And in sports news, members of Kampala Club marked the 2017 independence with a one-week tournament that ended over the weekend and winners were awarded prizes. Now, the current chairman Nimrod Wainala during the prize award dinner at the club said they had dark clouds when many of their members lost relatives and friends but are happy. Many have also been around to celebrate 55 years of independence. So being a sports club, they have had the day with a good note of sport. They competed in badminton, lawn tennis, squash, darts, chess, unisex, scrabble, walking, and swimming. You're still watching New Vision TV, and now for Pole of Africa series, we take a look at Murchison Falls. Murchison Falls are also referred to as the Kabalega Falls. They are located on the River Nile between Lake Choga and Lake Albert. The Murchison National Park, which was actually named after these eye-catching falls, is home to various animals. Visitors pay hundreds of dollars and travel thousands of kilometers to come and enjoy the rattling noise of the falls, as well as seeing the hippos, gorillas, giraffes, and crocodiles that live in the waterfalls and the park. Take a look. Speechless is what you become when you visit the Murchison Falls. Its beautiful view ranging from the white flowing waters hitting the rocks back and forth to the evergreen vegetation lying on the rocks. The falls are surrounded by vegetation and animals in the Murchison Falls National Park. These falls are home to wildlife animals such as hippos and crocodiles, while the park harbors lions, leopards, elephants, giraffes, oribis, Uganda cobs, chimpanzees, and many bird species. The Murchison National Park is recognized as one of the best national parks in Uganda because of the so many tourists who visit it annually. Great accommodation is also available for visitors from many lodges around the park, which also offer packages that include various destinations within the Great Lakes East African region. Accessing the park is by means of road, which takes about five hours from Kampala. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I'm Lynn Komjisha.